Hello and welcome back to Pandemic Playground with Dave. So today we have another experiment for you guys and that is playing around with parachutes as emergency brakes. Alright, so we played around with parachutes in the past for our ejector seat and also a personal parachute type thing which was kind of sitting in seat with the parachute block and I think a harpoon mod that's added on there to kind of make it compact and bit of a personal parachute in some ways but today I want to play around with the parachutes not sure why I haven't done this in the past but this is basically testing to see if a parachute will stop the car from going forward um, and how quickly will it do that so basically quick little thing to do here was add a quick parachute hatch in the back with the canvas the small grid version of the parachute hatch does only take one canvas and then it will launch the parachute that way. Uh, if you didn't know, the large grid version takes five. So this is probably an easy quick test to see if it will stop the vehicle from going forward. So my the quick answer I believe is going to be yes because when you drop down, it does stop you from falling down from the sky fairly quickly and you go down really really slowly. But of course, that all depends on when it's launched and when it's um, how heavy a ship is and things like that. But let's just see if we can stop ourselves and we're going to try to hit close to 90 meters per second or maybe 100 meters per second depending. So it looks like I can't get too close to 100 just yet, but I'm going to pull it in 3, 2, 1. And wow. <laughs> so that seemed to be interesting. So it was able to pull the parachute really quickly and stop me pretty much almost almost immediately. So that can be used as emergency brake. So let's just back it up just a tad bit here. And we're going to go forward here and let's see if we can target something. Oop, there's a bit of holes here. Ooh. Let's see if we can just keep going forward. Interesting. All right, so I'm going to hit the mountain right in front if we don't hit anything else so can we stop ourselves before we hit the mountain let's find out so it looks like we're going to pull it in three two one and whoop all right that stops it almost immediately with just one parachute this rover is very very light and i think it, it, it just covers a small portion of ground when we pull the parachute huh all right, so if we launch the parachute or keep the parachute on, it, it does stop us from going forward and it does pull us from the back. So that's interesting. So that, I mean, that all makes sense based on what a parachute can really do. All right, so just in case that was a fluke, I have one of two vehicles we can try. One is my makeshift bike and an actual motorcycle piece here with the mod, bike wheel mod. Um, we can try, I think this one, this one goes pretty fast and it works out pretty well too so let's avoid that thing all right so if we go fast enough hopefully we okay i guess that's not happening <laughs> not sure what happened there so that's the first time that happened to me with the bike wheel mod or in the motorcycle it broke almost instantaneously once it did a bit of a bounce um my game does seem a little laggy but that's probably because of all the materials and and stuff that we have here in the testing ground. So we'll leave it as that. But for this thing here, let's actually check the wheels. So we have unlimited here. We have 100 power. Okay, everything's set. So if we were to drive this thing as quickly as possible, and let's just say we're going to run into something. Let's target this guy here. Will we be able to stop ourselves pretty quickly using the parachutes? And if we pull it in three, two, one. Ooh. That actually worked out pretty well. They didn't realize I was running into a wedge like vehicle <laughs> to ramp like that. But that stopped us pretty well. It was a little late to a little later than expected. But that wasn't too bad. You can use parachutes as emergency stop emergency stops. Just like um, drag racing in some ways. At the very end when they're stopping, they have like those little small parachute that comes out. So that worked out pretty well. So why not try with ships or a flying vehicle? So I enlisted this vector thrust 
um, type of vehicle here and put in some parachutes. I have two here just to make it look equal, but we can launch one or two. It doesn't really matter. Um, I, I think if, in this case, currently it's going to result the same because of how tiny the ship is, really. So if we were to really fly this thing forward, let's just say towards a mountain like this, right? I think that's far enough. So let's just go forward and pick up the speed up to about 100 meters per second. I'm going to launch just probably one parachute and see if that's going to work out. So when we get close to the mountain, which I'm it's a little hard to see in this kind of view, but if we launch in three, two, one, will it protect us? Yep. Oh, that's almost instantly stopped us. So that works well for both a rover and a ship. So, I mean, again, that may have been a quick, easy yes answer for this experiment. It's something I haven't tried, so I wanted to just try it out. Makes sense, because when you're falling down vertically, it does stop you um, from falling. And, and that everybody experiences that on their first survival adventure, especially with the respawn pod, uh, which automatically throws out the and deploys the parachute um, for us. So, parachute emergency braking system, check, that works out. So what I also want to test is what is the drop rate when we're dropping down stuff? What is the minimal meters we can apply to the auto deploy for it to not hit the ground too hard? And I think it is going to be based on weight. So then you have to set your distance. But if we were to test something like that, I'm going to test it with a small little warhead that so explodes when it hits the ground. Put a little battery just for the warhead itself. I don't think it needs the batteries to be honest. But place the, the battery. But the battery. The but the parachute hatch needs the battery. I would think. Um, haven't confirmed that, but I think that's the case. And the warhead is armed, so when it hits the ground, it will explode. So what is the lowest we can go? Um, I by default setting, it's at one thousand usually. So we can change this because this thing here has very little mass, anyways. So I think we can go maybe even as low as 50 or maybe even lower than that. But let's just give it a quick test. So first thing we can do is just copy this guy here. And I'm going to match the speed of it, which I do control Z. And I have a pickup mod. So I'm just going to pick this thing up and turn my jetpacks on, fly to the side and then just drop it. So now I match the speed and we're dropping together so we can see how fast we're dropping. So if you see in the bottom left, you see that we're hitting close to 70 meters per second and climbing. So we should hit about 100 meters per second, looks like. And it should auto deploy at 50 meters. And there you go. It deployed. And the activated or armed warhead did not blow up. So it had a very, very little amount of um, space before it blew up. So think something light as this, as small as this. Could probably be about 50, maybe pushing at 40, 45 ish um, for the parachute to launch and slightly drop the warhead or, or a light mass or anything like that. So that's interesting to know. That's like almost last minute timing for it, of course. But why not test if you add more mass to it? All right, so I'm going to take the same exact warhead design and this time I'm going to put something I don't normally play around with but have been looking at ever since. Um, I've seen a lot of comments about artificial mass, so I am going to throw in an artificial mass or two onto this setting that we have currently. So I threw in two, and each artificial mass should produce artificially uh, 2,000 um, kilograms. But I did kind of test to see how that kind of all works if you put in a seat to see or look at the info to see how heavy it is. So the mass, the grid mass is 2,149 kilograms here. And if we were to remove the artificial mass, it's at uh, 336. <laughs> so if we add one of these artificial mass, right, we get about 1,243 kilograms. So about 900 or so kilograms heavier. So I don't know for sure if they calculate the 900 
kilograms into the artificial mass itself. So the artificial mass current with the battery and everything activated is producing artificially 2,000 kilograms. Is that an additional 2,000 of what the current weight is plus the artificial mass block itself? I think so, to be honest. But if we were to add an artificial mass, um, we can add one or two. Let's just do one for now. And this thing is going to be a little bit more heavier. So it's about 1,300 plus the 2,000 artificially. So it should be 3,000 kilograms heavy. And if we were to drop this at 50 meters with the parachute to automatically deploy the same way, let's see if it's going to do that. We're going to drop that. And we're going down pretty quickly. All right, so we may be hitting the 100 meters per second a lot quicker than what we had previously when it was very light, like 336 kilograms. But now we are at the 3000 mark and we should, yep, yeah, we hit the ground pretty hard. So the parachute seemed to launch pretty much at the same time. But the only issue that we have there is that the mass is a little bit heavier, so it wasn't able to slow it down as significant as the first one. Of course, we could try that again, and we could put a little bit more mass on here, and we could just do maybe two, or maybe three. Let's just do three. And the parachute hatch is going to launch at 50, so we'll just give it a shot and see what it's going to look like. So we're just going to grab that, toss it, and... I don't know, it says my dampeners are on, but I didn't dampen this one. <laughs> so that was a bit of a mess. There we go. All right, so we're hitting the 100 meters per second, and the parachute should launch soon. But I think it's still going to, yep. The parachute definitely did not stop it in time. So if we were to do something like that, I think if we do add more mass to something like this, we need to change out the settings i think i don't know i'm feeling 100 meters might be the way to do it because by the time it opened the parachute hatch it helped slow it down slightly but it was a little too late so let's just see what happens with um, 100 meters on the deployable piece of the parachute hatch so let's just grab this guy a little bit of a slow move there we go and we're climbing down pretty quickly. Uh, I feel like it's not really as quickly as the other ones. It's almost like the same for some reason. But I don't know. It is a little heavier. So it should be pulling down a little bit faster. But anyways. The parachute hatch should launch soon. That's 100 meters. And there you go. So we could probably get away with a little less. Maybe. But as you see here. The armed warhead didn't even bother blowing up whatsoever. Let's just grab this guy, go back up, and let's see if we could change a little bit of the parachute hatch auto deploy. So if you want to do that, let's just say that worked out pretty well. Let's just say 75 maybe. That might do it. I don't know. Let's just grab this guy, turn the jet back on, fling it off to the side, and oh, now it's spinning. Oh, I didn't even think about that the rotation and how it's falling might be a little bit of consideration of the timing for the parachute to launch too so hmm so this test might not be accurate but it comes close i would think so we should open up right there oh and it did not slow it down enough so i think maybe at 80 to 85 would probably do it but i'm not going to continue on with this so we'll leave it as that so so yeah, so it looks like with the minimal mass, we can probably do 50 meters to auto deploy. And if you want to do it by hand, you can always do that too. After all that is said and done, I want to try one more thing. And that is if a parachute hatch can slow down pistons that are extending um, forward. So what I mean by that and why I would test something like this is because, so I think it's a bit of a clang-ish thing here. So what I mean by that is if I extend the pistons and look at the meters per second at the bottom left, the speed limit, it speeds up fairly significantly. So you see I'm climbing at the hundreds to 90 meters per second mark here and there when while we're extending. So that's pretty quick in terms of motion, right? 
So if we were to actually like release my seat, I could probably fly 100 meters per second given enough pistons. It is a bit laggy of a reverse here um, or glitchiness. And that is probably because I have too, too many um, pieces on the floor or too many objects around this whole experimental environment, which I got rid of a lot of things if you kind of look through this here. But can we launch the parachute hatch to stop or slow down the piston speed? That we got is just so curious to know if that would be actually a thing. So what I'm going to do is hit my, my pistons to reverse. And then immediately after that, I'm going to hit 2 to open up the hatch for the parachute. Then we're going to do that in 3, 2, 1, go. And open hatch. Here's the parachute. And it looks like it's slowing everything down. And ooh. <laughs> that was a little unexpected. So interesting. So it did slow it down a little bit. But then it decided to just blow up instead of you know continue going forward slowly i mean another way to kind of test this would be maybe to decrease the the torque of the the pistons that might do something i'm not too sure let's just find out all right so we rebuilt kind of the pistons and everything like that we are missing the five that's in front of us on the left hand side and any other ones that blew up so we still can go fairly quickly. It's not as quickly as before. As you see, we never reached 100 or 90 meters per second. So, should be okay for this test, I would think. So, we'll take our pistons. We'll decrease our impulse axes and non-axes. So, we can kind of test to see how that's going to work. So, well, we already have a problem. It doesn't even extend if we did it that way. Interesting. So what if we just increased it just a tiny bit more? Let's just add another zero here, I want to say. That might do it. So it's it is not significant in speed if I did it that way. So that's a little poor. That's that sucks. Uh let's add another zero. There we go. That works a little bit better. So that's giving us about a steady speed of 30, 30 to 40 meters per second. Not significant speeds there, but I think a parachute would prevent it from going that quickly anyways. Um, I think I should be able to... Let me take the non-axes and increase it. No, that doesn't do anything. Yeah, so it's kind of clanging it out a little bit. It's freaking out, so it's not closing out the whole entire accordion piece of it. Not sure why. It's just a little glitchy. Um, but yeah, let's test it out one more time. Let's just see how, what it ha what happens when we lower the those those torque or impulses here. So in three, two, one, go. Hit reverse on the pistons, and then throw out the parachute hatch. And what is going to happen? It is going to clang out. Whoop! I am freaking out here. <laughs> I am floating in midair. And the screen is going crazy. Let me go spectator mode real quick. And I am headed to another dimension sooner or later, I think. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to hop off of the seat and see what happens now. Oop, it just threw me off of the seat at a significant speed, actually. And it's still floating on its own. So not sure what is happening. It's just kind of stuck in its own area. Can I get back in? Oh, I can. All right. So what's interesting is when I'm in it, everything's shaky, but look at the speed. I'm 104 meters per second and I'm not even going anywhere. So I think when I launch myself out of this, it's going to go 104 uh, meters per second and even faster, actually. And I just went backwards instead. <laughs> so I created some kind of pre-launching system or launching system for a person maybe if i did it vertically maybe i could launch myself into space maybe <laughs> but this thing yeah it's just freaking out it's bouncing um but we'll just kind of leave it as that and luckily we didn't head to another dimension with this whole thing all right so as always if you made it this far and enjoyed this experiment please hit that thumbs up like the video if you haven't done so already please consider subscribing to the channel 
hit that notification bell to be alerted of upcoming videos. Feel free to drop a comment down below. And of course, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.